I think uh, you have uh, a lemon tree, which is part of your uh, model portfolio as well, right, Gautam? So you may want to hang on and uh, listen to the next conversation, uh, which is coming up, which is, of course, the lemon tree uh, conversation. The management, I think, is uh, with us and he's ready uh, to, uh, so we can go across to him. Uh, so, they've, of course, uh, crossed the 10,000 room mark. Uh, it's also launched the first property in Nepal to discuss some of this and, of course, their expansion plans beyond India. Uh, we have Mr. Patanjali Keswani, Chairman and Managing Director at Lemon Tree Hotels. Mr. Keswani, good morning. Good to have you with us here. Thanks very much. Things have been going great. So, every time we get you on, the first question al always is, uh, uh, do things continue to remain as great? Or is, uh, have you noticed any downshift or, you know, even, you know, upshift if it's possible uh, in that sense. I'm talking about occupancies and uh, average room rates. Well, <clears throat> the good news is there is no downshift. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we have now entered H1, which is typically the, the low season for the hotel industry. Uh, and when I can compare it to the previous year, I don't see anything which is uh, less than last year. There is, I think, a slight pickup in demand. Uh, but overall, as I, I think I've said earlier, there is, I think, uh, going to be a structural shift in demand in India for branded hotel rooms. And elements of that, I think, we already see playing out. And this will continue for the next three to five years, in my opinion. Hmm. That's interesting. So, uh, Mr. Keswani, hi, good morning. Can you tell us a little more about what this structural shift in demand could be uh, how is the demand supply situation right now? Because a lot of segments, say uh, weddings, for example, right? Uh, Prime Minister Modi has indicated that a lot of the weddings now need to happen in India versus happening abroad earlier. So that would, of course, give rise to further demand. So I'm just trying to understand when you talk about a structural change in demand in the industry, what are you trying to, you know, what are you getting at? Good morning, Sonia. Well, I think what I'm trying to say is that it has been. Uh, you know, typically in our business, we look back and look at the trends and then try and project the future, which is some form of forecasting. So what we are really saying is we know how much supply is coming out in the next, say, three to five years. We know the trend lines of demand growth based on various parameters. And then we try and project what the likely occupancy and therefore price will be. But when I say structural, what I'm fundamentally saying, and this is not only true for Hotels, I think this is true for the overall consumer discretionary uh, story in India. It is that, uh, you know, in the past, about 60% of our personal consumption expenditure was always going towards staples. Uh, but when you go forward and, uh, you know, as the economy grows, that percentage will keep reducing because there is, you know, uh, you consume staples and that's that. Beyond that, as your income grows, and there are increasing cohorts of Indian uh, Indian consumers who are now moving into a position where every year with the growth of say six, seven, eight percent in the Indian GDP, there will be maybe eight to ten percent of Indians who move into an inflection point where their incomes are such that they spend much more on what earlier was discretionary for them. So they start basically moving from discretionary to non-discretionary. Got and it. that is what I talk about. So that is no longer looking back and saying every year this sector, this segment grew at 5% or 10%. This is a hockey stick growth because you have a very large number of Indians who will suddenly start, for example, uh, you know, traveling in SUVs on four lane highways within four hours of uh, urban centers in India and going on holidays. I mean, this is just a, 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 an example. So that is basically what I'm trying to say. And that typically happens in a country's economy when the GDP per capita, you know, moves from $2,500 to $3,000 per capita. Got it. So and when you talk about a structural uptrend, you, when you talk about a structural uptrend, you're talking more about consumer preferences also changing. And now India moving from, say, a low income to middle income economy. So, you know, uh, spending more on discretionary things. Got that. Absolutely. But how are you going to how are you going to capitalize on all of this? So if you can tell us a little more about your expansion plans, what is the hotel opening a pipeline for FY25 and over the next, uh, say, couple of years? So broadly, we, I reckon that we will open about 2,000, 2,500 rooms this financial year. And we will add or sign, put in our pipeline another, maybe 3,000 rooms. So overall, the inventory will grow 20, 25%. 
and the pipeline will grow by about 3,000 rooms, which is about 30%. So basically, our intention is every year, we add more rooms to our pipeline than the number of rooms we open. Uh, does uh, the political calendar or the IPL boost demand just in the near term? <laughs> yes. Uh, in some cities, it boosts demand wherever uh, events like this happen. And as far as uh, uh, the elections go, obviously there is more travel, but uh, <laughs> conversely also less demand in some ways. So uh, I think it balances out. There will be no perceptible improvement in demand due to elections or IPL in Q1? Uh, no, that's not structural. That is event-based. But Yes, event-based, but just in the near term. So there will be some improvement, but in some cases, because of, you know, all these rallies and so on and so forth, people will also not want to travel to a city. So I think on, on the balance, it evens out. Uh, Orica in Mumbai, what's been the occupancy? Well, that is, uh, I'm in a blackout period, so I don't want to okay. comment on the occupancy, but overall, I can say it is in line with what uh, guidance I've given. Uh, that the demand is, uh, is is quite good. Mm, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Keswani, if I can request you to take a question from uh, Gautam Dugar, who's been listening by. He's head of research at Motiral Oswal, tracks the company and, uh, you know, your stock is part of the model portfolio. I'm sure you know him well. Gautam, go ahead. Thanks, Vishan. Just wanted to understand, Mr. Keswani, good morning. Uh, good morning. Do you see the cycle extending? I don't want to basically ask about specifics of the company, but, you know, hotels as a sector has done exceedingly well post-COVID, right? Uh, whether you or your peers. And and we are seeing some of the sub-sectors in consumption, something like a real estate or other discretionary consumption sectors. The cycle is prolonging this time, you know, and, and uh, this has not happened in the past, you know. Margins have gone up, occupancies have gone up, and demand is outpacing the supply CHR. How long do you think this can last? Is it a two-year, one-year? You know, just just some perspective on that would be very helpful. So, uh, good morning, Rath. Uh, you know, typically, uh, we do look at uh, the hotel industry, all of us, as a cyclical business. And therefore, we say, how much is demand growth? And, you know, looking back, what was normal demand growth linked to a certain rate of growth of economy? What is the supply growth, which is known because it takes a few years to build a hotel? And then we try and project occupancies. But the broad point I'm trying to make is that if you look 15 years ago or 16 years ago to, say, Indonesia, and a year or two before that to China, and then go back to other countries that were roughly at this point of GDP per capita, as, as, as is in India, there is a magic number. The magic number was $7,000 per uh, capita which means roughly $30,000, $35,000 per household. At that point, there was a huge change in demand for branded hotel rooms. And if I look at China or Indonesia, say 2006 to 2013, the annual rate of growth of demand for uh, branded hotel rooms was CAGRing at over 22, if I remember right, 22%. As opposed to earlier years when it was less than half of that. Broadly, this is when, uh, and I'm sure you you understand this, uh, you know, uh, very well, that there was a very large number of consumers who suddenly started consuming branded hotels, hmm. and therefore the looking back of trend lines and linking it to uh, 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 growth per person and GDP and so on was no longer valid. So it was like a hockey stick for that, that five-year period. And then again, it stabilized and started growing at 7, 8, 10% a year. So what I, I, I am trying to say really is that we are on that runway. Now, whether it happens you know, in one, two, or three years, I cannot say, but I am 100% sure it will happen in the next four, four years. OK. Uh, it's interesting that we're having this discussion because uh, the other thing that is, uh, you know, India is benefiting from, Mr. Keswani, and I'm sure Gautam, you would agree as well, is this huge demographic dividend that we're sitting on, right? I mean, India has about, what, 600 million people who are in the age group of 18 to 35, and I think one of the youngest population in the world. 
So, and at a time when now the younger generation prefers to spend on experiences rather than things, Mr. Keswani, do you think that is an added incentive? Is that something that you guys have already priced into your, uh, say, average room rate predictions, for, for example? I mean, do you think that there could be a disproportionate rise in some of these metrics purely because of the demographic dividend? So, it's a very interesting point you're raising, Sonia. So, let me just give you, for the hotel sector or the tourism sector, what I would call four high-frequency indicators of demand growth. One is the number of runways in India. So right now we have, a, I think, roughly 150 airports with a certain number of runways. Uh, I believe this 150 is going to go to 250 in the next four to five years. That is what the government has announced. Uh, number two is that the number of seats or airplane seats in India is poised to grow from current to two and a half to three times this in the next four years. The number of four-lane highways in India have grown 3x in the last four years and is continuing to grow at that rate. The rate of growth of demand for SUVs today, that's a magic point, by the way, is already 50% of total demand for passenger cars. So when you look at all these, what does it tell you? It tells you that there will be far more growth in travel, both by car and by air. Number two, you link that to the fact that, as you mentioned, demographic dividend, the new younger Indian is far more aspirational, driven by credit. So my guess is that one big sector that will grow enormously in the next five years will be uh, the industry that provides credit to young Indians with good credit management because they spend today and pay later. They are aspirational, they are brand driven, they are experiential. They are typically under 30, 35. We see that in our own hotels. So you just put all these, try and connect all these dots. And the broad point, uh, which I think we have all kind of agreed on, is that there will be no longer six, seven, eight percent growth in demand. But for maybe the next five years, starting maybe this year or next year, that demand growth will structurally shift towards, say, 15, 20 percent a year. Oh, for a couple of years in that too. Uh, Mr. Kiswani, uh, fantastic conversation, sir. So interesting when you sometimes pull back uh, from the quarter on quarter numbers and look at the bigger picture, uh, you get, uh, and, and very good data points on, you know, the airports and uh, okay, the capacity, which essentially is going to come up over the next couple of years as well. Thank you for joining us and good luck. I uh, hope to speak with you after the first, after the fourth quarter numbers. Gautam, if you're there, thank you very much for uh, asking that question and staying on uh, as well. Thanks indeed. We'll